time. So there are things that we're always reaching for. There are goals that we have. We have aspirations. And maybe you want a certain award or a certain amount of money or a certain house or a certain car or a certain you know quality of relationship. There are all these different things that we want, but we have to be careful in thinking that the happiness or the well-being or the inner peace is going to come at some point in the future once we've accumulated or achieved these things like that is it, it's a very it's a dangerous and grave mistake in my opinion like you mentioned with the spay if you do one spay and you make a mistake you know that's gonna rock your boat it would be inhuman almost to not question yourself you know um you have to make a choice as to whether or not you're going to lean into it and circle that drain of doubt or if you're going to say i'm going to set this aside i'm going to stick with my belief i know i'm competent i know that while i maybe had made a mistake i learned from it etc i moved on but you know your core belief doesn't get shaken Welcome back to another episode of Get Motivated's Exploratory. My, my name is Dr. Quincy Hawley, and I'm here with my co-host, Renee Michelle. I know. Hello. What's up? What's up? It's, it, it, it's, no, it's, it's me, but I'm waving. Right, right. It's been a little while, man, since we've done one of these episodes. So we had a little bit of gap there. and. But, you know, I did want to say that um, since... Since we are recording right now, I mm-hmm. think that it's a really great time to be recording. Even though there was that gap, the way that they'll be released is perfectly in sequence. But we're recording during COVID. Exactly. Um, yes. Which yes. maybe we'll, you know, we'll be talking about how relevant it is to the current situation at hand. And yeah. then it's funny when people think back, you know, if, if people are listening to it at a, another point in time. That's a that's a good idea. We should do that for today's episode and for future episodes. And um, so, as you as you already know, uh, exploratory is our get motivated veterinary well being specific podcast where we talk about all things related to veterinary well being. And we're glad that you joined us today. And on today's episode, we're we're going to be talking about so last episode was about idealization. We defined it. We talked about visualization a little bit and what the difference was there. So if you didn't catch that episode, definitely go back in and listen to it. Um, But today, Renee has a seven step sort of process to idealization and how you can apply that to your life as a veterinary professional and your life as a human being. Because as you already know, we're human beings first, wearing the persona or the hat of a veterinary professional. And so we have to cater to both sides of, of that in terms of your well-being. You have to cater to the human side and to the veterinary professional side. Uh, with, with that being said, Renee, do you want to go ahead and and hit him? Hit him with idealization, some idealization stuff. Well, actually, actually, take, I take that back. I take that back. Y'all know I'm like erratic and all over the place. But can you, um, before you do that, I... What, what does idealization mean to you? How has it benefited you as a mom, as, you know, as a veterinary professional and as just a human in, in general? Like what are some of the benefits? So I take this a lot from you. So I think that you are way more skilled at this area than I am. You know, when I think about when we started everything, you know, so three, four years ago, who knows how many years ago, but when we started everything and just being out at the the soccer fields running and things like that on our lunch break, you, you very easily visualized things and created this roadmap that was just, you know, reverse engineered, but the, the easy part it seemed like to you was just that visualization. And then taking that visualization and just 
ramping it up to saying like what's ideal. Um, so I've had to do a lot of work to unrust my dream gears. And what that means is I spent a lot of time in my 20s becoming this realist. And I spent a lot of time as a veterinary professional just being tied to my circumstances, tied to being paycheck to paycheck, um, and tied to what is, or maybe what was, or this really negative sense of lack. Um, so there's been a lot of work done to be able to even idealize for myself, but then go through the process so it starts in my mind and then in my energy and like then go through the process of what idealization is and how to really massage that and then manifest it. <laughs> so that's the really neat part. Um, and there's a lot of different texts and audio and visual that we've both studied that has helped us be on the same page. But Idealization to me means something better than, you know, whatever that close to perfect picture is, you know, it's like, you're right. Mm. It's, just, it's just really the, the best, most harmonious thing um, that whether it's an ideal life scenario or whether it's an ideal scenario, like a conversation with your boss, or maybe it's how would my ideal self handle this? Mm -hmm. um, I ask myself that question a lot as a mom, you know, okay. and okay. you know, when something presents itself, I'm like, okay, how does your best self handle this? Or how does your ideal self handle this? Because we most often recognize that we're not perfect. Oh, you know, gosh, and yeah, especially sure. if you're doing the work of self-development or self-help, you've started to differentiate like that ego. And so, you know, overreactive and right. Yeah. Right. So there's one thing that you pointed out there that, that I need to, and that we all should sort of look at is that there's an ideal, like overall life that you can have. And then there are ideal ways of handling individual circumstances and conditions and life events and even these little situations, little life situations. Like if you're handling, if you're having a conversation with your boss, like what's that ideal uh, sort of um, conversation look like? What would that conversation look like if it went exactly the way you wanted it to go? You're about to ask for a raise or ask for more time off or, you know, let your boss know that you're getting burned out or something like that. You can idealize what that would look like and then you can go back. And the second step would be to visualize, okay, what would it actually look like if this conversation was going exactly how I want it to go and play it out in your mind first. And oftentimes what I've learned through the idealization or visualization process is, is that you can kind of sort of see what's going to happen before it even happens. And so when it actually does happen, you're, you're prepared for what, what they might, what they may say, whether it's in support of what you want or whether it's a sort of against what you want, you know? And so I, I think that's a really cool distinction to make. I love to use idealization, as Renee pointed out, just to look at like, okay, what would that, what would heaven on earth look like for me? So most of us have this ideal of what heaven is or where it would be. And I'm convinced that it would look completely different for every single person. Like I see heaven is having lots of flowers. I don't know why. <laughs> there could be no flowers. There. I don't know. But I just see it as as a certain cert, sort of thing in your mind's eye. Like, what do you see w when you think about heaven or something like that? But anyway, yeah, um, I, I just find it fun to do. And before Renee gets into this eight step process, it's really going to hack your ability to idealize and bring those things that you idealize in your mind into manifestation. Um, I want to point something out. And Renee and I talked about this, I think it was just yesterday. Like there is your life situation and then there's your, your, your like life. And this is a little bit complex. This is, this is a little bit deep, but your life situation is the thing that um, you're trying to, I guess, quote unquote, improve 
at all times. So there are things that we're always reaching for. There are goals that we have. We have aspirations. Maybe you want a certain award or a certain amount of money or a certain house or a certain car or a certain you know, quality of relationship. There are all these different things that we want, but we have to be careful in thinking that the happiness or the well-being or the inner peace is going to come at some point in the future once we've accumulated or achieved these things like that is it, it's a very it's a dangerous and grave mistake in my opinion like i have big financial goals and i have you know a dream renee and i have a dream of making well-being a thing of the past for the entire global veterinary profession right but if we say we're not going to be happy and have inner peace and be fulfilled until that happens well, we're not going to be happy very much. <laughs> we're not going to have a, a huge sense of inner peace because we know it's a it's a huge goal and that it's going to take some time to achieve that. What do you think about that, Renee? We talked about it yesterday. So many people make that mistake. And some of it's just a cultural mindset. That's what we've been bred to think and to, you know, absorb and to believe because you know, you hear it, you hear it from your parents, you hear it from other individuals, you hear it from other people struggling, like, you know, well, I'll, like you said, I'll be happy when, or I'll right. be left stressed when, and things of that nature. But then, you know, A, those things, what if they never happen? Or, <laughs> you know, you know, depending on what they are, but what happens when um, it's, it's five years down the road, or it's two years down the road, or, or 10 months down the road? Um, I just, you know, it's, it's very important. And I just said, um, to Neil, that's my guy yesterday is that we are, we're crushing some of our financial debt goals. And I said to him, we, it's so important that we have to celebrate because that's something, you know, we aren't doing like, again, you're not really bred to celebrate that. Um, you're bred to just kind of say like, Oh, on to the next thing. Okay, I did this. On to the next thing. You know, again, because I still have a mountain of <laughs> debt, right? Most right. veterinary professionals do. So it's like, what if you're not going to be happy until all of your debt's paid off? Oh my god! Right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. it's, it's so recommended important. against. <laughs> yeah. So by me and Renee. <laughs> you are absolutely. Right. You're, you're so right, and so. But that's some of the work that we're going to help you guys do is right. finding yeah. that inner peace, finding that balance, finding that harmony, that state of stillness that comes while you're doing the work because yes. it's possible. And more importantly, and I'll get to this at the end, you'll actually see it's, it's really counterintuitive to not follow that rule because that energy of being at peace and that feeling of relief can actually help you create that life or create, get closer to that goal faster. Um, so it's so, yeah. so important. Yeah, it's, it's necessary. It's necessary to have the inner peace now if, if you want to manifest that ideal that we were talking about. And I can't wait to hear Renee's eight tips. I just want to point out one thing that Renee said, because, you know, I, my, my biggest thing right now in life, Renee, is perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I wrote this little list out of when, when I'm old and gray, what things will matter to me. And so I wrote down this list of like maybe 10 things. And I said, I want to check these boxes every single day. You know, the things that will matter to me when I'm old and gray, like I should be doing those things now so that I can cultivate that. And it was, it was really powerful. I did it, you know, when the sun was rising early in the morning, um, it was kind of cold, but. That's an exercise I did actually. I wrote did like you? an obituary, like oh. during my sort of this self-development journey. Yes, it was like maybe a year or two ago. Um, I was doing like this life work planner kind of thing and um, writing your, your obituary, how mm. you want to be remembered. Okay exactly for that purpose is so that you can start living that life now because right. again right when you're 80 or when you're 100 or when you are ill or you know morbidly like on your deathbed and you can't do anything about it at that point right. you know are you going to look back at your life and say you know this is what mattered and 
So when it comes to navigating your life, leading in your life, and living intentionally in your life, that is where the principles come from. There's a book that I really love called First Things First. And while it is spiritually based, it does help you focus on the intentions and the principles that matter to you that are driven by your core values and beliefs. So that is your guiding principle. It's first things first. That's the name of the book. That's the way you start your day. It's the way that you lead your, you know, your career and everything. If your family matters first, then that's what you put first. But so many people kind of say that and it almost loses meaning. You know, people say it all the time, but it's just kind of like, you know, I love you. Again, if you're not practicing it, Right. It starts to lose its meaning and it starts to, you stray far from it. If the first things first are, you know, your schedule matters more than say the, the amount of money that you make. Again, those kind of things, um, if the quality of your mind, et cetera. So that's an awesome exercise. Yeah. Side yeah. note, you know, for people that are in that, right, that's, right. you know. And so perspective mm-hmm. was on my, um, on that list, like my perspective is, is going to mean a lot to me when I'm old and gray. What perspective? What perspective I had all throughout life. And so I heard you do a thing, and then I heard you come back, and it it's just perfect. So it's a perfect example. So you said that you and Neil are crushing your like debt and crushing some of your financial goals, mm-hmm. right? That is a positive way to look at it. You can, you can look at the same scenario and say, yeah, we paid out some things, but we mean, you know, like we're just, we have so much work to do and I'm not sure if we're ever going to get out of all this debt. Like that's, that's one way to spin it. Or you can say, we're crushing it, man. We're, we're, we're knocking this out of the park basically. Right. Yeah. And then you came and- back and said that we still have a lot like most veterinary professionals, uh-huh. but we're still crushing it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that's an advancing and positive perspective, perspective and way to look at it. Like you're, you're, you're advancing, you're developing because you're working as a team yeah. to, to, to go through and crush yeah. these goals. And that's completely different than looking at it like, Oh, there's this amount in a student loan uh-huh. that will it ever go away. Yeah. And and to put it into perspective for people, I mean, what I mean by that and what we're celebrating is both of us paid off about a $400 credit card. So <laughs> like you said, that is our first, like we're in, um, that's our first part, uh, the, the lowest payment that we have, you know, and so that's kind of small when you think about the other debts that we have, and I'm not gonna break it down. That's like a whole other podcast, but, um, like you said, it, someone could. It wouldn't up, matter oh if it was four hundred bucks. Like, what are you celebrating? It but, wouldn't matter if it was four dollars. You celebrate it like it was four million. Exactly. The, the end. Point blank. Bottom line. Keep that momentum going. And it's it's the energy level that you're bringing in, into your life yep. of feeling like you won the lottery. Right, and reduce I, I, the stress. Yeah. Why do the work? Why do the work if it's not going to reduce the stress? Right. So if you're going to do the work, you have to let some of that stress go you have to um you know yeah just let let that go and be present and it's relative it's relative what paying off a certain amount of money means to you is relative and if you think that you you've basically won the lottery because you paid off a 400 hundred dollar credit card well that's the type of luck and energy you're going to be attracting back to yourself that the good things happen to me and we, we we get stuff done you know what I'm saying? Is it Dudley? Dudley, uh, our, we've got a role model named uh, Mr. Dudley. And I think it's he, it could be Wallace Waddles. Sometimes I read so <laughs> many people, I forget. But he says, heck, it could be Les Brown. I don't know. Someone says to save, save, you know, $5 a week or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Yeah. It doesn't, if it's $1 a week or 10 right. cents a week, because you're creating a habit. Yeah not about the amount that you're saving it's about the habit that you're creating so if you look at that and go okay if you're creating the habit of paying things off it doesn't matter what that amount is and so then you can flip it to say maybe it's practicing gratitude with your husband or your wife in this case we're talking about idealization so maybe it's um handling a scenario really good uh you know i was at work one time i'm at work i'm at the vet clinic and i get a call and I hung up the phone and immediately I was like, 
ooh, girl, you could have handled that better. I couldn't do anything about it because I had obviously already handled it. But what it was is I noticed that I could have handled it better. And five years ago, it would have never even registered to me that there was a different way to handle it at all, right? I would have just went on about my merry way and yeah, right. just said, you know, I am who I am. What I say is who I, what I say. But okay. now I can recognize and go, there was a better way to handle that. Okay, great. The opportunity will present itself again um, because what I was dealing with is something that happens all the time. But nevertheless, you know, it caught me off guard. And like I said, I could have handled it better. And so there it is. The, the ideal, what's the right. ideal way to handle that all right hit me okay so step one step one you said it in our last podcast understanding where self-belief comes from why it's awesome for some people and why it's lacking for others and you might say to yourself well why are you guys talking about self-belief we're talking about idealization the point is that if you don't understand how these things are interconnected, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to idealize. Like I said, when I started the process of idealizing, I had to unrust my dream gears because I was a product of the environment and it was a very negative sense to what idealization is. And so idealization is positive. It's in a positive sense of, you know, the word. And if you think of the opposite of idealization, you know, you're just thinking of negative. And so even Albert Einstein did thought experiments. He didn't have to run the physical experiment. There was a thought experiment that he would do in order to process through his equations and through his theories. And that's how he did a lot of his work. And so if you think to yourself, oh, you guys are being really flaky right now. No, there's some concrete work in what we're doing. And even now, there are some studies in quantum theory that <laughs> tell you, you know, when you start to observe certain things, those certain things change. And so it's really important to understand where this is all coming from, yeah. how it ties into your self-belief, and like I said, why it's awesome for some and why it's lacking for others. And as I mentioned earlier, you're really good at explaining this. So I'm so, gonna let you. So belief, I mean, I think it was Jesus who said, and I'm not, not very religious, but I, I respect the guy for sure. And I, th I think he's really powerful in terms of some of his beliefs that he held but one thing that he said was, as you believe, so shall it be done unto you. And if there's any truth to that whatsoever, if there's any truth to as you believe, so shall it be done. Then if we're thinking about this ideal scenario, this ideal life that we want to create for ourselves, we can use that to our advantage. All right. So whether you're religious or not, not really important here. We're just talking about the, the principle of if you believe it then it, it, it'll probably happen that way. And uh, one, one of the big things and what, why it's so important as it relates to idealization is that you have got to, in order for that whole belief principle, as you believe, so shall it be done, to actually work, you've got to truly believe it and you've got to truly feel that what, whatever you're believing can in fact happen. So, for example, if you, you probably don't really believe that you could turn yourself into an elephant. And so even if you say, you know, I, I believe that I can turn myself into an elephant, deep down inside, you don't really believe that you can do that because you, you know that you can't do that. And, and if you did really, 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 really believe you could do it, you'd probably be taking actions and steps and reading books on how to turn yourself into a different thing, okay? And so, for example, that's really hard. I could put on my idealization scenario that I wanna be a trillionaire, right? But do I really believe, you know, you know, deep down in my core that I can, in fact, do that? And maybe the answer to that is like, in, in my core, I don't believe it. 
And so when it comes to this idealization process, the very first step is that you've got to believe that you can create the personal and professional life of well-being that you want for yourself. We say that all the time. Like, yeah. do you really believe that you can have a life of well-being? Yeah. Do you believe that you, you can have a life of inner peace before you get the certificate of completion for whatever you're trying to do? Do you believe that you can have a life of inner peace before you get into veterinary school, before you graduate from veterinary school, and before you own the practice with six doctors or whatever? Like, do you believe that you can have, you know, an awesome marriage, an awesome family at home, and a, a profitable business where the people are happy, it, the clients and the co like, do you believe that? And if you right. don't, that's, that's why it's step one. You have to get there before you can really, um, to be you've able checked to out before the process even has even started, you know, or exactly. you're really not engaged and, um, you're carrying all of that with you. And on that note, belief is something that Sometimes you have to allow someone else to believe in you before you have self-belief, right? Mm -hmm. That's sometimes a step that happens a lot with mentors and with, you know, other people who find inspiration from someone other than themselves, right? So like if I inspire someone else or, you know, I'm not quite inspired or I didn't think I could do it, but someone else believed in me. Um, sometimes it starts there and that's okay before you have that confidence and that self belief, you know, but eventually it's there and you can keep working on it. Like I am continuously working on my belief because my belief very honestly at times wavers, which is not effective. Um, when you have conviction, there is no change to your vibrations. There is no, there's no confusion to the message that is being sent out. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have that, there is a lot of wandering aimlessly. There is a lot of confusion and mixed signals being sent based on your actions, your, you know, the way that you speak to yourself, the way that you speak to other people, et cetera. So there's a lot of misalignment. And when it comes to me and living a life of balance, it's all about that alignment. And sometimes stuff just rocks your boat, you know? Um, you, like you mentioned with the spay, if you do one spay and you make a mistake, you know, that's gonna rock your boat, but you have to make a choice as to, it would be inhuman almost to not question yourself, you know, right. um, you have to make a choice as to whether or not you're going to lean into it and, you know, circle that drain of doubt. Or if you're going to say, I'm going to set this aside, I'm going to stick with my belief. I know I'm competent. I know that, you know, while I maybe had made a mistake, I learned from it, et cetera, I moved on, but you know, your core belief doesn't get shaken. Right. And I think another part of that, too, is um, when you're talking about the conviction behind your belief, if you can't say it out loud to, to yourself looking in the mirror, yeah. you don't have it. You don't have the belief yet. And, and this is actually a thing. I have had people on the phone with me or in person and, you know, they just can't look at the mirror. They can't say it because they don't believe it. And so, um, like, for example, can, can you say, if you're a mother, can you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm an amazing mom, I'm one of the best? Like, can you look in the mirror and do that? And I know that it can be hard for some people to actually do it because they really do believe that they're not mm -hmm. because of maybe a mistake or maybe another mom friend is doing something, you know, I don't know, in, in the world of like breastfeeding, for example, maybe another mom has the surplus of all this milk in the freezer and you're struggling to produce the amount that you want. And so you start to believe that they're a better mom than you and that you're a worse mom than them. And so you, maybe you have a hard time writing it down that I'm an amazing mom. Maybe you have a hard time writing it down or saying it out loud to yourself. And when you can say it to someone else, and if you can say it in, 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 in social media or something like that, if you can say it something about yourself, then all these are different levels yeah. of, of sort of 
getting that conviction and that self-belief. And when you really get the conviction and that feeling, that's when you can actually and move forward. And as Renee stated, if you, if you need someone else to sort of believe in you, first and foremost, we do. Um, I, if you're religious, you know that um, whatever higher power is out there, the universe, mother nature, that believes in you. And one thing that Renee and I do a ton of and, and I think that even if you're not an entrepreneur, do this anyway. And that is to listen to self-made millionaires or self-made entrepreneurs, because most of them had struggles. They started out, they were struggling probably just as hard or even harder yeah. as you are right now. And they yeah. were able to come out of that. And, that. and now like that's proof that people can sur surmount. Yeah. Challenges, mountains, hurdles, obstacles. Right. Mountains. Time and time again. And it looks really different. You know, Oprah Winfrey looks really different than, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Michael Jordan or something like that. Or but, Tony Robbins yeah. and Les Brown, like all these guys, a lot of them were yeah. homeless. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and that's where it gets inspirational because you can think, oh, well, you know, well, I'm not Oprah. Well, you know what, when you have 60 people that you're listening to and you know, they're telling you kind of that same story, but their own unique story, you start to pick up on those differences and you can see your life in that same way. Right. And so if you think about me 20 years ago or 15 years ago when I began my struggle and then I began my way out of that struggle, I did not know what the roadmap was. I just knew that I was capable. Um, like if other people on this planet are happy, like I could be happy. <laughs> There's, I would be happy. And you know, you led us perfectly into the next step, which is owning it, owning it and writing it down. Napoleon Hill talks about organized planning and writing it down is your next step. There is a tangible kinesthetic response that happens when you physically write things down. There is a change in the way that your brain remembers things and the way that you engage with it. Like, you, you know, when you verbalize it, you ingrain it into your being, into your essence. You begin to own it. And sometimes those things can be chicken and the egg, you know? So if you, if you don't believe yet that you are an amazing mom, but that that is something that you want as your ideal character, you begin to say that to yourself and you begin to embody that. And you then begin to take actions that align with that. And so I have um, a reminder that pops up into my phone and it says like, I am fun, light and confident. And what that means to me is it's a reminder that I am those things, even if that pops up to me. And in that moment, I'm like an anxious ball of like uh, rigidness, right? It reminds me that I have that ability. It's something that is important to me. And I can, I can bring that out in myself. And so what am I doing to be fun and to be light and to be confident? Um, because it's possible. And, you know, I, I want to write that down and that's something, you know, that matters to me. So when you have it in your mind, um, one of my best spots for doing this is in the backyard. Uh, my backyard is, is a decent size, but you know, the blue sky is there. I have a tree line that I can see, you know, I have some birds, but it's fairly quiet and I'm able to really use my mind as the tool that it needs to be. Um, and I start to visualize this stuff. You know, I start to watch how this unfolds and it really begins maybe sometimes gross. You know, we've talked about this before in other podcasts where, you know, it's just really basic stuff. Um, but then it can get really, really detailed. It can get so detailed that you are understanding and feeling your ideal day happen moment to moment, minute to minute, hour to hour. Like, what are you doing? What kind of emotions are you feeling when you're doing those things? And then you start to write it down. And that, my friends, is the, that's the beginning of your roadmap. Because okay. now you have a recipe. 
I love it. And one sort of trick or hack that Renee just mentioned um, is, is putting a reminder in your phone. And this isn't like some esoteric BS stuff that we're talking about. These are things that we actually do because we know of the power of these of these techniques. And so one thing that I have on my old and gray, I'll just kind of show it here in case this is a video at some point. But I have um, written down there that, um, that that I understand the power of my imagination. And so in order to take action behind that, I have a reminder in my phone every three hours, like a little alarm comes on that says imagination. And that's my reminder to imagine that ideal that I'm trying to create, you know, and it, rem it reminds me to do that because sometimes I, f I forget, I get caught up in the hustle and bustle of, you know, of, of work and of life and I forget to do it. And so now I say, you know what, you, you don't have to remember to do it. Put the alarm in the phone that reminds you to use your imagination. Um, and there is so much evidence that your imagination um, is really, really powerful. Uh, and so I'm not, gonna get, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but yeah, it's, it's a technique that you can use. So if there's something that you wanna create for yourself, don't just write it down, don't just say it out loud, take action and, 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 and put a reminder in your phone to say it out loud or to write it down three times a day yeah. in, in the morning when you make up, wake up, noon, and then before you go to bed, just do it, just do it. Yeah. Like leading us into the next steps. I love it. So that's the next step is the small action steps. And so that is an action. So putting something in your phone is an action to help you get, you know, those things in real life. So if we're talking about an ideal personal or professional life, if we're talking about, you know, that, you know, being the exercise, if you will, then you write it out. And like I said, start really gross and then move towards refining it. And then you start with your action steps. So obviously you're not just going to jump zero to a hundred. You're going to start small, start where you are. You hear me say that all the time and do things that, you know, on the daily that would get you there. So even just asking yourself or answering the question, what am I doing every day to get there? Okay. What does that look like? You know, and that could be the question of, um, I was talking to one of my girlfriends. She said she was struggling with, um, her husband and, you know, she was traveling a lot more. The girls are in their late teens. So like 18, 19 and you know, the house, the home life was looking really different and she just was like, I don't know, things are just kind of off. And I said, okay, so let me ask you this. I said, what does good look like? What does ideal look like? And she's like, oh, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? <laughs> so if I don't know where you live, how am I going to get to your house? Exactly. Idealization is exactly that. I spent a lot of years wandering aimlessly, <laughs> changing uh, college majors, all sorts of different things, not knowing where I was going in life. I didn't know direction. And so when you have an ideal, that becomes your guiding star. When you write it out, that becomes your roadmap and you break it down piece by piece. What does that look like? What does an ideal relationship look like? What does an ideal weekend look like? You know, what does uh, your ideal career look like? What does an ideal day in that career look like? You can take every piece of your life and break it down further and further and further to where everything is in harmony. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I love it. And um, you're, you're, exa you're exactly right in that this whole idealization process is your guiding it's your North Star, it's your Polaris of, of your life. And it helps you to take those small actions by actually knowing where it is that you wanna go. And so at in, any point in my day, I can look at, at, at my, if sometimes, you know, we as humans can kind of get confused. Like maybe on a day where you're not at work, where you, where you 
at work, you know exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. At work, you're supposed to be, you know, doing medical notes and writing prescriptions and all this other stuff and treating pets and doing surgery. But sometimes at home, when you're off day, when you're not in that role of being a veterinary professional, you're kind of like, I don't really know what to do with my time. So a lot of people get really bored. Yeah. But for me, I can, I can always turn to my, when I'm old and gray, what things will matter to me, I can turn to that resource. I yep. can also look at my, I call it my dream life description or my well-being description and say, hey, do, do something from this. Do one of these things to actually mean something to you. And I, I know where to go because I have that guiding light. I have, have that North Star. I know where point B is. I know what to put into my GPS. Like, so, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm all set to go. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So number four, gratitude. Ooh, gratitude deep, it deep. has its own emotional signature gratitude is so important gratitude is a step above thankfulness it's a step above appreciation deep gratitude will keep you in it gratitude to yourself gratitude to others to the universe, like you said, at any higher power, uh, practicing gratitude because again, it's going to help keep you aligned emotionally, mentally, energetically, and again, writing it down locks it in. It solidifies it. Yep. So it's creating another habit but it's keeping things on the good, right? We're all focused on that positive aspect of idealization. And so it's keeping it on the good. If you're going through this process of idealization, self-belief, you write it down and then you just get like pissed every single day. Right. Like you're just, you know, throwing yourself off. You're taking, you know, you, the progress that you've made and you're like unbuilding your dream house or you're, you know, putting your boat in the water and then, you know, just taking off pieces of the boat to where eventually the boat is going to sink, you know, some right. sort of metaphor that's just like tearing what you're building down. Yeah. Um, it's not going to, it's not going to serve you to be expecting things of other people to be negative, to be angry and things like that. And so practicing gratitude is really important for the idealization process because it's going to help get you and propel you. It's almost like that propeller. Uh, to where you want to be. It's going to keep that alignment there. Trying to, trying to attain your idealization or trying to bring your idealization into outward manifestation without gratitude is equivalent to trying to do surgery on a dog with no anesthesia, no surgery instruments and uh, no assistant, no intubation tube, no needles, no syringes, no fluids, no drape, no surgery, surgery gloves, no surgical gown, and just go ahead and chop your hands off too. Like to me, it's that important. You can't do surgery without those things and you cannot manifest your life of idealization without gratitude. I know that was an extreme example, but I am sincere about this. And, and the reason I'm so sincere about this is because you're probably gonna get your butt kicked along the way. And yeah. if, if, if you allow the, the sort of negativity from getting your butt kicked to really come in and, mm -hmm. take, and start to make you doubt and start to make you angry and bitter instead of better, then it's, it's going to be really hard to, to achieve your manifestation. And so there are a few different types of gratitude. That's what I mentioned briefly. There's forward looking gratitude forward. Um, and so forward looking gratitude is being thankful for things that aren't even here yet. Right. So you can be thankful for your, the, the life of well-being and pers pro both personally and professionally that you want for yourself, you can be thankful for that now. Even though it's not here, you can say, you know, I'm grateful for the life that's coming towards me. I know it's coming. I'm grateful for it. Boom, it's already done. You can be grateful for all the things in the past for pushing you forward towards 
where you want to go. So if you've had struggles in your past, you can be grateful for those things because, because maybe without your past, you wouldn't be listening to Renee and I right now. Maybe you would never even map out that ideal. Maybe you would ne never start taking actions towards that ideal. So for me, I can be grateful for the struggle that I had previously because I wouldn't be where I am today without it. And then I think most importantly it is sort of present level gratitude. I just made that up. Um, but present level gratitude is like the gratitude of now. Be it, being grateful for the way things are right now. You've got to do that because by being grateful for what's here right now, you are bringing in the process that's actually created where you are right now. Okay? Think about that. Every action, thought, and step you've ever taken in your entire life has put you exactly where you are right now. Right? We could go back and just sort of look at, you know, the things you've thought the things you felt, the actions you've taken and the words you've spoken. And that's all of that put into like a point is where you are right now. Yeah. And so it's going to be the same exact way in the future. And if you can be grateful for that process of knowing that the words that I say, the thoughts that I think and the actions that I take are going to lead me to the point in the future you're, you're good to go. Like, go back and re-listen to what I just said as many times as you need to until that makes perfect sense. And then you will see that it is true. And you will see that your your ideal life, it's up to you. Because guess what? Who controls my thoughts? Oh, um, interesting. Who controls the words that I speak? Interesting. And who controls the actions that I take? Interesting. You have really touched on some points that thread together these steps that we're talking about because idealization has to be recognized that, you know, we're talking about reality and our ideal reality. And so whether or not your ideal scenario, whatever it is, characteristics, et cetera, is your reality is something that you need to make a distinction between. But you have to understand that even though you are living in the present moment, if you become so tied to what is, using my debt example, if we were so tied and living in that, you're absolutely, we would never get out of it. Um, and so you have to somewhat live in this or live in the now while experiencing the ideal. What that means is mm -hmm. you, like you said, are practicing gratitude for something that would be forward happening or practicing gratitude for what is right now, because without, you know, these things, so everything sort of threads together and one without the other can help you, but one with the other or one with every single one of those others is really going to get some momentum going. And yes. so, um, yeah, that's really important for people to, to know that that's what they're kind of working on. And so, and so when we're talking about gratitude too, here's another really important distinction to make, and you're kind of touching on it now, deep gratitude, okay, is being grateful for everything, the right. good, that gift. the things that appear to be good, and the things that, that appear to be bad. So if you can imagine like a, a wavelength, the ups and the downs, right? So be good for the things that feel good in life. Right. And that's fairly simple to do, uh, probably unless you're in depression, then you, even the good things don't feel good, maybe. Um, but if you can be grateful, be grateful for the good things is easy. But when you get down here in those troughs, on those low moments of that wave, that's where this deep gratitude really plays in is really going to help you to manifest all the things that are in your ideal. And it changes your experience along the way. 
right? No one knows what the future holds, even if we're all working towards the ideal life, but it changes your experience along the way. So if you are happy in the now with that gratitude and you're grateful in the now by practicing that, you are changing your well-being. What, mm -hmm. is, our, what is our purpose? To decrease stress and increase well-being. Well, I promise you that if you practice gratitude in the now, you will have those two things happen. Yes. It's proven. It's yes. proven time and time again. And so you're absolutely right. And, you know, the, in the moment, it matters so much to be able to practice that. Um, I'm, I'm just going to plug in. We, we talk about these things in mm -hmm. our race approved course that we oh, just yeah. got race approved and you get that online. Um, it's, it's really inexpensive and we go into detail. We have diagrams. You can look at all this stuff and hear us right. talk about it and actually get credit for it. So, so right. glad that you listened to this podcast. Please come back again for, 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 for next week and finish this episode as well, but go check out that course. You can get the four uh, um, race approved CE hours and get, it even more in depth on the things that we're talking about right now. Just want to throw Absolutely. that out. That's great uh, to, to recommend to people because a lot of people don't know that we've, we've developed those courses and right. you know, so it's changing your experience and that brings us to the next step. So if you've heard Dr. Holly speak before at, you know, you've heard him talk about perspectives. If you haven't, then, you know, like I said, or like Dr. Holly just said, go over to the race course because he probably talks about perspectives there. <laughs> Actually, he definitely talks that's, about That's right. The, the, the second hour is all a perspective on how to use that to improve your client relationships, your pet relationships, and all that jazz. So, yep. so very briefly, you know, as step number five, perspectives – Again, changes the experience that you have in your well-being, in your life, in your reality right now, but it also helps to change and get you toward that idealization process. And so it's really important for you to understand that your perspective, you are not your thoughts. So that's something that I talk about when I talk about anxiety and mindfulness is that you are not tied, your identity is not your thoughts. And so it's really important for you to start working to separate and become a witness to your thoughts and use your mind as the tool that it is designed to, to be and to start honing your mind, train your mind, because your mind is, and the quality of your mind is what determines your interpretation of your reality. And that one's kind of a big one. And so you might have yeah. to relate to that, but wow. you know, your mind you and I can go on a first date, leave, and have a completely different interpretation of whether that date was awesome or whether it was weird. And it's the same scenario, two different internal representations of that. And so perspectives is part of that. And perspectives, when you're talking about idealization or when you're talking about everyday living, everyday working, it's really important to understand what perspectives are and how to manage your unique perspective in order to be functioning at an optimal level. Wow, wow, so I mean, with just so, so many good things there. And the only thing I wanted to say as it relates to perspective, it, I, I could literally sit here for the next 24 hours and never run out of perspective content and things to say, <laughs> okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and probably longer than that, but perspective, allows your worst days to become your best days. It's the one thing that allows you to live a life of heaven while you're still here on earth, right? Because everything is all relative. I'm gonna give you a quick example. Let's say that you almost get hit by a car when you're going down the interstate, okay? You almost get hit by a car. Most people, my reckless driver, right? Yeah. Most people would be pissed and maybe in a, in, a, in a bad mood because that's the perspective that they're taking towards almost getting hit by a car. Now, and this ties into self-belief and, and, and uh, self-confidence like greatly, greatly. Now, let's say, for example, that you have an advancing perspective. The car almost hits you, but it doesn't. Wow. 
a person with perspective will, or good perspective or with a higher perspective would allow almost getting hit by a car build and boost their self-belief because by not getting hit by the car when I, I don't get hit by a car I feel like I won the lottery mm -hmm. right because had the car have actually hit me Mm -hmm. My life completely changes. And so on the other hand is your gratitude, right? Yeah. So, so it, perspective and gratitude. Write it together and how these things interwork together. Yes. Yeah. So you bring the gratitude in with your higher perspective. Higher perspective allows you to see that only good things happen to you. Like that's your perspective. Yeah. That, 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 they're, they're very, 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 very similar. And uh -huh. so I look at perspective as kind of like, like your core operating system. And uh -huh. then like as the gratitude as like the actual thing that you're using um, uh -huh. in that situation. But my perspective says that Quincy, only good things happen to you because okay. one, one of the perspectives that I use is, um, wait, <laughs> I lost it. Oh my God. I love the perspectives that the only thing that can go wrong in this world is my own personal attitude. And I can always make that right. So that's not gratitude itself. Yeah. That's the perspective, right. but it allows me to go back and say, how can I be grateful for what just happened? I almost got hit by a car and now I instantly go into gratitude. Yeah. My, if my daughter's in the car, Imagine if the car actually hit me and my daughter's in the car. Maybe they lose a life. Maybe they get dismembered. Maybe I lose my own life. Maybe if we're going on the interstate, maybe there are cars behind us and they're now getting you know, into the accident and maybe someone in those cars lose their life. And, and maybe, maybe one of those people is a pastor or an influential person and, and they do a lot of good for the community that they're in. And so I see now that by not getting hit by that car, but maybe thousands upon thousands of people's lives are allowing to thrive because somebody almost hit me. Yeah. And so now my, my internal operating system and my belief goes up to say that, wow, man, I'm a really lucky guy. Like yeah. instead of getting hit by a car, I almost got hit by a car, right? Because they're really, really different. And, but it, it would be really easy to get pissed and blow the horn flip them off the bird, F you, and yeah. allow that to negatively affect your day. Yeah. Call your mother-in-law or whatever. Tell them. Yeah. Think about it to them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, and so if we go back to the steps, you're right. Boom. Perspectives, gratitudes there, your small action steps, you know, you're, and then it's leading you toward the ideal of if you, if you, you want to experience happiness, you want to be present with, you know, your child, you want to be stress-free. All of these things are going to help you be that, you know, it's going to help you live that every single day. And so with that said, it brings us to the next step, which is celebration. Honoring, honoring, respecting, celebrating at each step. And the reason why I say celebration is because we're creating habits. So we already talked about it a little bit in the beginning, so I'll be really brief, but you are creating habits. Uh, Dr. Holly, you know, you just said to me yesterday that you're doing something new. And I said to you today, well, that's great because it falls right into our topic. You were at, I'm going to just put it on blast for you. You're adding into your planner certain checkpoints of rewards so that when you do X, Y, and Z, you reward yourself with X, Y, and Z right. because you want to build this habit and you want to hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to what you're, you're doing. It's right? almost gamifying it too. It's, uh -huh. it's almost like gamification of your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So tell us more about that. Yeah. So basically sometimes in life, certain things can be soul sucking. <laughs> and so maybe some of the actions that you're going to have to take to achieve your ideal, because again, as Renee stated, you have to take actions towards the thing that you actually want in life. And so sometimes those actions can be just maybe not fun in and of themselves, but you know that they're necessary to create the ideal that you want. Right. Yeah. And uh, basically what I'm doing with my reward system is that I have all the, the steps that I need to be taken to to reach a certain goal and I'm assigning like a point value system to each of those things. So whenever I do um, a thing, I give myself a certain amount of points and then I allow those to build up. I love to eat sushi. If you love sushi too, shoot me an email or something. Maybe we'll have to go get sushi together someday, whoever you are, wherever you are, we'll meet up. Um, but I, I love sushi and so I can't eat sushi 
unless I accumulate a certain amount of reward points through taking actions uh, of towards creating and manifesting the ideals that I have sort of my idealization. And it's, I'm excited about it. I just started this probably last week with this whole new reward system. And I have things like, I love to, I love to go to Outback Steakhouse. It's one of my favorite uh, sort of places to go. A clam chowder is so good. And then um, like trips to certain locations. So I can basically accumulate points and allow myself to go to certain vacation spots. We live about two hours from the beach. So I can and take my, my daughters to, to the beach or I can take them to Disney World if I accumulate a certain amount of points of working towards certain things for the business. And um, it's, it's, it's really exciting. And especially as if you're like a hospital owner, for example, or the practice manager of, of, your, of your place of work, uh, sometimes because you're the boss, like you can't really get rewarded for for certain things like you can you can create the reward system for your staff right if you're the owner you can say okay if you sign up x amount of pet parents onto a wellness plan that we're going to give you a hundred dollar gift card but usually if you're the owner of a hospital you probably don't include yourself in that sort of thing so that's for other people to be more motivated and inspired to uh, sign people up for wellness plans but for yourself this is now your own personal sort of reward system that you do not only for things at the hospital, but also in your personal life. And uh, you can get creative with it. Maybe I'll do a, a video um, with some examples of certain, certain things and, and kind of the way I do it. But it, it is really important. And it allows you, Renee, I think, to experience some of that fun and enjoyment well before you actually get yeah. to that end game goal and it, mm -hmm. one thing that we haven't talked about with idealization is that it never ends there is there right. is there, there is no arrival to point b uh because you know it, it it's always going to change it's always going to grow into something even more beautiful and more awesome than what you think you kind of yeah. want now but it's important to start out with what you think you want because that'll lead you to where you need right. to be. And that's well-being too. That's well-being. That's personal development. It's the journey. You know, it's oh, yeah. not an end goal. It's the process. It's not, it's you know, a never one, ending journey. Exactly. It's not one test. It's a process, you know, it's a practice. And so those celebrations, you know, life can get really mundane. We talked about in the beginning that, you know, right now we're living through COVID-19 and you know, your perspectives, everyone's life has been rocked in some way, shape or form. And you have a choice. Believe it or not, your mind, while you might have default thoughts, you have a choice as to whether or not you're going to believe them, whether or not you're going to act on them. You have a choice. And so that's where the perspectives comes in. That's where celebration comes in. That's where creating new habits come in is that, you know, you have a choice in all of these things and it helps to reroute your brain. Your brain is structured and it has physical neural pathways that are defaulting based on your behaviors, based on your thought patterns, things like that, that become automatic. Um, but, you know, that can be changed. And so creating that celebration releases all of the happiness hormones. You're going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> that's the point. I mean, that's why people become, you know, um, really engrossed in certain activities because they're happy, they're engaged, they're releasing certain hormones. That's why they go around certain people because they make them feel good. That's why, you know, I'm, you know, certain things you become addicted to, whether it's negatively thinking, you know, that's a, an addiction or whether it's something else that, you know, makes you feel good in the moment. So celebrations, make it positive, make it right, make it a habit. Um, and you can start small. So step number, let's see, what's the number are we on? Six? I think step number, you know. Um, I, think, I think we're on seven now. We're on, we're on, yeah. So, yep. So we're on six. We're talking about celebrations. You know, yep. we're talking about starting small. You don't have to jump into it like really, really big, right? So you were just saying that you have all these um, 
reward set up for your point system, you know, you wouldn't just try to tackle a bear, you know, if you've never like right. ran a mile or if you've never right. tackled anything. So you really got to start small so that you can get those increments up and you can increase that self-belief and that confidence in doing it. But and for example, um, for example, if you're a veterinary professional and you hate your place of work <laughs> or you hate yeah. the, do the place where you're at right now and you want a better job or, or a better hospital or a better experience as a veterinary professional, you don't quit your job. Like that would be a, a big and unnecessary first step. Okay. Right. You, you right. need to start at the very beginning, like Renee said, and take small actions and try to enjoy the place that you're at right now. Like those are small things that you can do. Right. Find one thing, find one thing in that hospital right now that you can lean on that you can grasp to say that th this part of it, it really isn't that bad. And so yeah. it can be the one thing that you look forward to every single day and maybe find a second thing and then a third and then pick out one person that you can't stand and pick out one good quality about them. Even if it's just that they're alive. I mean, whatever, it, it, lean on, <laughs> make something up. I don't know, make something yeah. up about the place, right? That's the whole, kind of the whole idea. Make up a small all idea of something and, and start small, but do and, something. And you can really use it, uh, we've talked about this before, but contrast. So if you are in a situation that your reality is not what you want it to be, you can be grateful because now you have the ability to recognize what it is that you don't want. So learning from the contrast, that's really, really important. Um, some people can call it adversity. You know, if, you if you're going through something, if you're, you know, experiencing something at your job or with your relationship, with your life, whatever the case is, you, boom, now you're aware. 10 minutes ago, you weren't even aware of what the problem was. So how are you going to fix the problem if you don't even know that it exists or you're not even able to identify it? So now here you are aware, you're able to identify it, you're able to work with it now. Um, so that's where, you know, what is it that does that you don't like about your job? You know, right. right. Being and able to identify those things helps you either a shift them, talk to your manager or whatever, or B look for a new job that doesn't have those things. You know, if five doctor practice is not for you. Don't work at a five doctor practice. Go find a cat clinic that has one doctor. If you think one doctor cat clinics are boring, go find a five doctor <laughs> practice, you know, whatever, go right. play with horses or pigs or, you yeah. know, whatever, what, it is. whatever you want to do. And yeah. what Renee is saying is so powerful. And I actually did this. Because we get stuck I, 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 in routines, you know? I, I literally wrote it down on a sheet of paper that I didn't want to be in the veterinary slash hospital situation that I was in. And now here we are years later, I'm in what I consider my perfect veterinary job. I wouldn't change it if I could even a lick. And here's the thing. It chased after me. I didn't even have to go find this job but because I was so clear on what I didn't want, which mm -hmm. is where I was at. And what I wanted in a job, it, when I saw it instantly, my brain yeah. picked up on it. My reticular activating system knew exactly what I was looking for. And instead of passing that email by, like I may have, it's kind of like spam. My brain knew what I wanted. My soul knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted. And I was able to instantly do that. And with very little effort, yeah. all, all, you, all you have to do is know what it is that you want. It's a start Call it creating you don't the space. Create the space. Right. If you don't have the space for a new, you know, perspective, a new job, a new person in your life, that person, that job, that tool that you need is going to come to you. You're going to meet Dr. Quincy or myself, and I, we're going to present to you a, a, a tool, a strategy, something that if you're not ready for it, you're going to pass it up. Right. But if you create the space in order for that to come into your life, then boom, that opportunity is there and then you can sail along with it. So, um, you know, those things really lead us all together. You can see where individually they're beneficial, but then all together they start to really build that momentum. And the last step, number eight, is balancing your seven. energy. Or number seven, number seven, right, right. Um, number seven is balancing your energy with your belief. So this brings you full circle, right? So what is that belief? What is that idealization? And balancing your energy with that. We talked about a little bit in the middle of the steps where we're talking about being present with what is, 
being grateful with what is having a little bit of forward gratitude. So we're not spending a ton of time in the future. You know, we're still using mindfulness, but we are spending some time understanding what it is that we are searching for. What emotion do you want to feel? You know, if debt, why do I want to be debt free? Is it because I don't want to owe someone? Meh. I want the freedom. I want the relief. I want the independence that comes with that. It's not all about the numbers. It's not about the pragmatics of it. You know, it's about the emotional perspective. It's about the, the ease that will come to Neil's and I relationship. It will come when we have the independence and the freedom to, you know, purchase Gavin a, a new dirt bike in, in cash without having to, you know, move around money. Um, you know, so there's so many things that come with it and those things are what drive it. So you have to balance your, your energy with your belief because if you're not believing it, like I said, you're sending out mixed signals, you are not following through on your action steps, you're going to avoid those action steps. If you don't believe it, you're going to avoid those things. And if you do believe it, you're going to do those things because you think it's going to get you what you want it to get you. Um, and a way to help balance that energy and belief is, is being aware. You know, put that reminder on your phone. Put it on a post-it. Stick it on your bathroom mirror. Balance energy and belief. Because it just gives you a moment to go, am I? If I'm not, can I realign? What emotion do I need to reach for to, that would get me closer to what I'm trying to feel? You know, what is it that I'm trying to do? And, you know, maybe it's meditate. Meditate in the mornings. Meditate midday to realign. Meditate to just rebalance, recalibrate, to release the tension of whatever just was and to become more intentional with how you're moving forward. And so meditation can really help you in this aspect to continue keeping that alignment. And here's the thing, guys. It's okay if you have strayed from your practice. You know, it's okay if it's been a year since you've cracked open your personal development book. It's okay if it's been 20 you know, days since you last meditated. COVID has thrown everyone through a loop. I've got, you know, some, some moms, you know, they're dealing with autistic children and she's like, I barely have a minute for myself, but I, I'm going to find that minute. I just need some time to re-find out, right? Like I'm a new mom. Well, new mom-ish, you know, like we've, we've got a newborn, but you know, Brayden's eight. So, you know, newborn in the house that <laughs> Brayden's eight, right? We're going through COVID. I'm not working, uh, outside of the home right now, but we, so it's realigning what is my, my daily routine looks a lot different than what it did a year ago. Um, but there's a lot of intention that goes with that, but there's also a lot of forgiveness and permission that says it's okay. Be present, ha you know, live moment to moment uh -huh. while working very gradually toward that ideal. Okay. So when you say balancing the energy, cause I, I need a little clarification, but yeah. I think I have it now. Okay. So basically, um, we don't want to be too woo woo on our, our, our podcasts, but sometimes no. it's hard for us. But when we start talking about energy for some people, they, they probably have a hard time oh, cool. like envisioning okay. and imagining what okay. that is. But I, I basically think it's being able to be in surrender and acceptance to the fact that things are going to be different as you pursue the ideal mm -hmm. and to be okay with all the changes that it, that you've made along the way. Is that sort of what you mean by balancing the energy? So looking at the things that you kind of want to create, looking at all those steps and all the little actions and thoughts that you're gonna change uh, about, about your life and being okay with all of that and being okay with everything that's sort of happening along the way. If COVID comes and gets in the way, you're in acceptance that this, this is a part of just the process of creating my ideal being a, that that to me is like that neutral ground where you're in flow as far as acceptance and surrender goes mm -hmm. um 
But when I think of balancing the energy with the belief, it's a matter of, you know, am I walking in the house and the energy that I bring into the house, you know, you can kind of walk into somewhere mm. and you can cut, cut the tension, right? So if I walk in the house, if I, if, if that energy that comes, when I talked to Neil yesterday about, you know, us paying off the credit cards, there is an energy about me. There's a characteristic about you. So you've got some charisma to you. You know, if I go to him and I'm like, Hey babe, so, you know, congrats on paying off the bills. You know, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Eeyore, okay. Right. Okay. So if we're, if we're Eeyore. Okay, um, that, that, okay. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. So if you've got a belief that is, you know, there's a way about you, there's a way about your being, the way that you carry yourself through the day. You know, if there's a, if there's energy that you have in the morning and you're pumped because you're a morning bird, you know, versus a night owl, just recognizing what those things are and do they match? Do they match your belief? You know, um, because if I, if I don't match that belief, you know, if I say to myself, um, maybe your belief is, uh, that, so you, let's take an example. So an idealization, you know, you want to have a rock solid relationship your belief would be is that your rock solid relationship, you guys are loyal to each other, right? And if your guy comes home and you start interrogating him, you know, you're mm -hmm. throwing out an energy that does not say, hey, I'm confident that you've been loyal. Instead, you're throwing out an energy that says, hmm, I'm insecure gotcha. and I'm concerned about our relationship, gotcha. right? So, so you does your energy align with the ideals that you're trying to create? That's yeah. it. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it's okay it. if they don't, right? Because again, we're humans. We're having a human experience. Your ego gets in the way sometimes. Um, but to be able to recognize that, right? And then to say, okay, what do I need to do to shift? Um, and what do I need to do to balance that? Um, so that you're not. If you're if 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 we go back to the money thing, if you're so stuck on feeling lack. If you're so stuck in feeling stressed and you're so focused on every single penny that goes out the door, then the fact, you know, that you'll be debt free and you're right. feel, you'll feel relief. What happens when you are debt free and you're so stressed still? Well, what if we can't go back in debt? Don't buy that, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's, that's There's always the something else. It's exactly. Always something That's that energy. It's that pattern of behavior. It's that habit. So you want to start to balance those things now right. so that you can feel that and br open it up, create the space for that to be in your life. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. It's, this has been really a really good episode. I really, I really hope a lot of people listen to it. I um, think you, you, we said it, I said it yesterday. I said this thing came at a really good time because I'm, I'm one of those people who I haven't been, um, it's been a while since I've redone. I think it was beginning of the year, uh -huh. right? January with a lot of people, January. Now here we are in May, you know, to redo some idealization of where we go in in the next few months. Um, it's a perfect time for me. Yeah, it's a it's a perfect time for 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 everyone, and the pe the people to wrap this episode up. The pe people who have idealized that I know, my mentors, myself, Renee, my mentees who do this, it works. It works, and it, we're we're not trying to one up the universe or one up life or anything like that with something to just, you know, but, but it, it's effective, man. It's, it's not necessarily easy. It is, it's very simple to do this, but it's not particularly easy because it's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some thought. Okay. Yeah. Renee mentioned at what, one point in this podcast earlier on, she said that it seems easy for Q. Um, and, but she's had to put in a lot of work in order to get to where she is and that we've used lots of resources. Hey, that's a part of the process. You know, I've been doing this for a very long time. You wrote a book about how to discover, pursue, and achieve your dream life. I've been through this. I know I know it's effective. You ain't got nothing but time. You ain't got nothing but time to get go ahead and get started. And what better way to spend your time than by 
learning all these tools and strategies and resources that are going to help you to live a life of heaven on earth right now and also help you to create in your mind first the ideal life that you would like to live for yourself the ideal life of personal and professional well-being of well-being at home and of well-being at work and to actually start to manifest and bring these things in very deliberately and very intentionally into your life what better way to spend your time than on doing that and those things and, and um with that being said thank you so much renee for the for the seven steps we'll actually write down the seven steps we'll put them on the description of this video in the description of the podcast on the get motivated university website um if you haven't already enrolled into get motivated university you can can enroll through the podcast for free and again if you're interested in that race course that we have it's a four hour race course called the veterinary well-being choice it's super duper awesome should we give our should we give our podcast listeners a discount renee should we give them yeah a discount okay we'll, we'll say 25 huh 25 percent 25 percent 25 percent of this you get 25 percent off um if you're a, a a practice manager or a hospital owner um for your entire organization there we have an a price for that and then if you're an individual and just want to go through the course by yourself you also get 25 percent off of that and the code is um going to be um i think it's, I think it's well-being for you i think um well, let's use let's use a different one especially for our podcast listeners well okay. being. Oh, here we go. Here so, we go. So let's let's use it. Let's, let's create one, especially for the podcast listeners. So we'll call it. Um, well being for pod. I love exploratory. Oh, okay. okay. I love exploratory. I'll write it in the description of this thing. <laughs> okay. I love exploratory. I L O V E exploratory. Got it? <laughs> you get 25% off of the veterinary well-being choice, how to prioritize, cultivate, and maintain well-being as a veterinary professional. Um, but thank you again for listening and tuning in. If you enjoyed this, um, if you're watching on YouTube, like the video, leave a comment. Are you gonna are you gonna idealize? Have you already idealized before and it's really effective? Or are you struggling and having challenges? Um, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel and um and also share this with your friends. Share this with your friends, let them know if you have a veterinary colleague who, who you believe could, could use this information, then please share this with your friends, your family, and colleagues, coworkers, wh whoever you want to share it with. Uh, we're just grateful for you guys and we're grateful um, for, for the podcast as well. Any any final remarks, Renee? No, you said it fabulously. You know, enjoy whatever uh, platform that you're on. Absolutely. We appreciate your support. And I think that your support, like Dr. Holly said, if you have a friend, your support is going to help someone else. But, uh, you know, like Ashani, one of our team leads, he had said, same thing other people will benefit from you being well so just keep yes. that in mind and it's a perfect time you know mother's day was just passed and covid's here you know a lot of people have the opportunity to just have a different different way about their day you know even if they're not home there's you know just a difference into the way things are going and so take this opportunity and make some changes yeah and if you need like um some assistance if there's something that you're struggling with right you can shoot that in the email i think there's a way you can schedule a call with either renee on us or renee or i on our, our main website yeah. if you hunt around you can you can find that information and or just shoot us an email if you say or leave a comment we'll, we'll check the comments to this video um because we, we want to help you like Right. The thing that makes us the happiest is when we hear success stories and we see other people crushing their lives by using some of these tools and strategies and resources and content that we know are effective because we're not just talking about these things, man. This isn't some stuff that we read in the book and are just like regurgitating it back here to you because we think that it might possibly work. We know this stuff works. We've done it, we've lived it, we've seen other people do it and live it. And so if you need help with that, if you want to experience the awesomeness that we're talking about, hit us up and let us know. With that being said, this concludes, I think this is episode 12 or 13 of Exploratory. 
Uh, we're excited. We're excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I post them every week, you know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, y'all take care, have fun, and treat, treat the puppies and the kittens and the cows and the horses and whatever species you work with, or if you're protecting our food supply because you're in regulatory medicine, whatever, have fun, be blessed, enjoy the rest of your day, week, month, year, and life. That's it. <laughs>